If you've been following along with the development of my Balloons Tower Defense clone that I'm creating in Unity, then you'll know that I'm using scriptable objects for many of the features. Also, one of my goals with this project is to implement extensive unit testing, probably because I've been watching way too much of the Infallible Code YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing off my full unit testing suite and showing you how I can quickly and easily test the most important parts of my game. Now, if you already are familiar with unit testing and you just wanna skip ahead to the scriptable object specific things, I'm gonna go ahead and include links in the description below to all the time codes of kind of some of the major topics. So you can just skip to the portions that you want to. Now, a lot of this testing suite is built based off of the things that I learned from Charles on the Infallible Code YouTube channel. So if you do want a little bit more detailed information on any of this stuff, I will leave some links down in the description below so you can check that out. I'd highly recommend his content. And hey, while you're poking around down there, feel free to go ahead and poke those like and subscribe buttons if you wanna to continue to see awesome content for me related to Unity game development. Of course, if you do have any questions on any of this, or if you have suggestions for future videos, you can leave that down in the comment section below. So we're gonna start over in Unity as we do most of the time. And as you see in my project hierarchy here, you'll see that I have a tests folder. And under that, I have two folders for edit mode tests and test infrastructure. I do plan on creating some play mode tests later on, but right now what I'm testing out on the scriptable objects doesn't need to be ran in the play mode. So edit mode tests work perfectly fine here. Now, if you don't already have your test folder set up, of course you just go ahead and open the test runner window like I have here. Now I already have the edit mode test set up, but basically if you do want to set up edit mode tests, you go to the edit mode tab and then you click this button for create play mode test assembly folder. And then once you have that, then you can go ahead and actually click the button to create a test script in the current folder. So that will create your test script and I can show you what my test script looks like now. Actually, before we get into the testing, I just wanna show that I do have one plugin. I'm using the Fluent Assertions plugin. I'll leave a link to it down in the description, but basically you can just drop the DLL into a plugins folder and then you can just go ahead and update the import settings like this, and then you won't get any errors. All right, so here we are in one of my edit mode test scripts, and basically I'm testing the balloons properties scriptable object. Now on the balloons properties, I have a property called the red balloon equivalent. Now, if you aren't familiar with the balloons tower defense games, every balloon in the game has something that is known as the red balloon equivalent. And that's essentially a way that you can calculate the number of hits that it takes to destroy the balloon and all child balloons. So if a balloon takes maybe four hits to pop and it has one child balloon that spawns another child balloon, the total red balloon equivalent is going to be six. And now it starts to get more complicated when you have you know, balloons that spawn multiple balloons. How do you calculate the entire red balloon equivalent of that main balloon? And so because it can get a little bit complicated and I have some recursion going on in my code, I wanted to make sure that this is something that I extensively tested because having a properly calculated red balloon equivalent is going to be very important for some things that I'm trying to do in this game, which I can talk about in a future video. So you see with the first test, I'm just starting very simple. I'm testing the red balloon equivalent on a balloon with one HP. And so you'll see that the way I have this test set up, it's literally two lines long and everything is extremely easy to read. So like you can say balloon properties, just define the variable type. And then we're going to define a red balloon properties and we'll set that equal to a balloon properties with hits to pop with a value of one. And so that basically sets up the balloon that we have. And then now we can check the red balloon equivalent by just doing our red balloon properties dot red balloon equivalent dot should dot b and then we pass in the value for one and so you see that this is fluent assertions at work here this should be so you see normally with unit testing is you'd have to do something more like this where you'd say assert dot r equal and you pass in the expected value of one and the actual value which is the red balloon properties dot red balloon equivalent so it's doing the exact same thing but i think it's just a little bit easier to um, write and read when you do the red balloon properties dot red balloon equivalent dot should dot be one. That just makes it really clear exactly what it's doing. Again, this is ex extremely easy to write, extremely easy to read. So let's say that in the future, if I am maybe messing with some code and then I have a test that fails, I can come back to this test and I can really easily and clearly see what I'm testing and how I'm testing it. So that's why it's extremely important to have good testing that is easy to read and easy to write. Now you can see that as I go along that we have um, you know, more tests that get more and more complicated, but they're still you know, only like four lines long at max. 
Um, I'll leave a link to the whole GitHub repository so you can read through these if you like. Now, essentially what we have here is something known as the builder pattern. And the builder pattern is really cool because we can essentially use it to build objects that we may use over and over and over again during our unit testing. But let's talk about how to actually set this up. So first, I'm going to talk about this static class called A right here. So the reason that we have this static class called A is mostly just for readability and ease of use. So it's basically how we can say I want A dot balloon properties and then it returns us. It actually returns us a balloon properties builder, which is what we'll get into next. And that's how we can actually build a balloon properties with all the specific values that we want. And again, you'll see that within this static class, you'll see that the other things that I'm testing, such as the game statistics, round spawn statistics, and spawn group, these are all set up in this same A class. And then if you have a data type that starts with a vowel, you can also make a separate public static class called an. So you can have like, you know, an apple class. But let's actually Actually get into the balloon properties builder here so the first thing that you notice is within this balloon properties builder basically we have private values for you know every single field that we have on our regular balloons properties scriptable object that we want to set and so I've just kind of populated these with a lot of default values and then we can kind of override them in these different public functions so for the balloon properties builder all these public functions are actually going to return a balloon properties builder so for example, I have one called cannot pop from darts. And when we do that, then it sets the can be popped by darts value to false. And then it just returns this. And I see that I have a couple more similar ones. And then here's one that I showed off earlier, this with hits to pop. You see that we can pass in a value to this. We just pass in an integer for the number of hits that we want to um, pop on this balloon properties. And then here, of course, we just set the value to that value that we pass in again, just returning this. So most of that is pretty straightforward. We're just kind of setting fields in our balloon properties builder. Now the real magic comes in the actual build function. You'll see that the build function, I have this as a private function, which returns a type of balloon properties. So this balloon properties, this is our scriptable object. So now here's where the scriptable object portion comes into play. So now to essentially instantiate a new scriptable object of our balloon properties type, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a scriptable object dot create instance, passing in the type of balloon properties. And we can just return that to a variable for new balloon properties. And then you'll see that on this new balloon properties variable, I'm basically just setting the property for say, for example, for the can be popped by darts, I'm setting the can be popped by darts field, which is on this balloon properties builder. So essentially when this build function is called, it's creating a new instance of that scriptable object. We're setting all the values that we kind of queued up within this balloon properties builder. And then at the very end, we just go ahead and return this new balloon properties. Now you'll notice that I have this build function set to private. And the reason that I do that is because I actually don't call this build function in any other scripts. I'm actually only doing that within the balloon properties builder script. So see down at the bottom here, I have a public static implicit operator, which returns a type of balloon properties and it takes in a type of balloon properties builder, which we just call builder. All it does is return builder.build. Now I know this might be a little bit confusing, but just bear with me for a second. So I'm gonna step through this one thing at a time, and I think by the end, you'll be able to connect all the dots here. So you'll see that our end goal is to get a balloon properties type. And using this custom A class, we can actually return a balloon properties builder. You'll see that even though I've called the value balloon properties just for readability sake, it's actually returning a balloon properties builder. And again, if you hover over this with hits to pop, you see that this also returns the balloon properties builder. However, when we assign that equal to a balloon properties type, we actually are using this public static implicit operator, which essentially can convert the balloon properties builder type into a balloon properties simply by calling the build method on the balloon properties builder. So essentially what we're doing with the A class is just queuing up all our values. And then when we assign that to a balloon properties type, then it basically builds this balloon properties scriptable object for us and then it returns it to that value so then we can use it in our testing. And so this is really cool because again, we can get more complicated with it. So for example, for this blue balloon here, you'll see that this returns a balloon properties with hits to pop of one. 
and it also spawns a red balloon. So we can kind of chain these properties together so we can get kind of more complex and granular specific things that we want to test on these different balloon properties scriptable objects. And so not only is the builder pattern extremely easy to read and extremely easy to write, but it also is extremely cool. And I'd hate to let you go without me showing you something in Unity, so we're just gonna go ahead and run all my tests here. You'll see that all my tests pass because I'm a freaking genius. <laughs> Anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos from me on Unity game development topics. Again, go show some love to Charles over on the Infallible Code YouTube channel. I think he's doing a lot of good work spreading the message about unit testing and a lot of other important features that you should be implementing in your video game development. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on unit testing in the comments section below. Do you use it? Do you not use it? What do you like about it? What do you hate about it? Really would like to hear from y'all either in the comment section below or over in the Discord community. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.